Tensions have boiled over across many of South Africa's townships as once again reports emerge of ailments and deaths, allegedly as a result of the consumption of fake and expired goods. Good evening, welcome to Unfiltered. I'm Sizwe Mbofu Walsh. It's a decades-long concern that persists despite calls for the state to take decisive action to regulate these businesses. With the recent reported deaths, the state is once again found wanting and making promises too late for the families of the children that may have lost their lives, allegedly, after eating illegal products. Does the government take food safety seriously? Joining me for this conversation in studio, we have the MMC for Public Safety, Johannesburg, Dr. Mkini Chwaku, Mputi Mputi from Soweto Business Access, Mr. Johannes Habib from the United Ethiopian Community Association. And on Zoom, we are joined by Penny Campbell from the National Department of Health. But first, let's watch this insert for some context. Communities protesting the unsafe products sold at their local spaza shops. They have reached a point of no return as they fear for their children's survival. This time around, we've taken a stand to say we'll be fighting with the community. Where they die, we'll die with them. Because at the end of the day, we cannot, we cannot, we cannot allow such to happen in our country. It's unclear how many people have died as a result of consuming unsafe tax shop products across South Africa. But the country has a history of ongoing reports of unsafe food being sold at both established and informal establishments. Among others, in 2017, the country experienced the world's largest documented outbreak of listeriosis, which according to the National Institute for Communicable Diseases, saw 1,060 cases being registered and 216 people dying. In 2021, three children from the Eastern Cape and two from the Mpumalanga province lost their lives, allegedly after consuming two different well-known noodle brands bought from their local spaza shops. Following the latest reports of the deaths of several children in Gauteng and Free State, who also allegedly died after eating snacks bought from tax shops, communities questioned the state's commitment to their safety. We have waited long enough with the new leadership. Results has to be on the table. We cannot take it anymore. The economy has been taken out of our hands in Mangun uh, by undocumented foreigners. We say these people are selling fake goods in our community. They must deploy SARS uh, immigration uh, law and SARS and um, health department. The issue here is that there is no proper uh, regulatory framework or the implementation thereof uh, with regards to dealing with the township economy, there is no way of uh, or there is no oversight role that has been played by government to ensure that the spazas which are controlled and owned by uh, illegal foreigners in South Africa are properly uh, regulated. As communities take it upon themselves to clamp down on these establishments, some have been accused of using their legitimate concerns to target foreign nationals for their own political ends. No looting has been done. Is all. Ama Somalians, ama Pakistani, ama Bangladeshi, ama Ethiopian, but decide to keep a bomb. But to bully, ama South Africans that are making them. The local business, they, are, they have been suffocated by these people and they are running their business like it is a cartel. They are bribing a lot of people, including our councillors, some of the councillors. That's why they have power to, to do whatever they want. Send your inspectors to raid these shops. Let us know what is it that people are consuming from these puzzle shops. A powder keg of vulnerable communities feeling under siege from an inept state failing to enforce the law, fearing for the safety of their families and having to survive the tough socio-economic conditions of their lives, with no obvious culprit to take accountability when their lives are at stake. Tonight we ask, does government take food safety seriously? Welcome back to Unfiltered. Dr. Chwaku, welcome to the show. Of course, um, 
This is something that cuts across multiple government departments at yeah. multiple levels, but you're relatively close to this in Joburg. Do you have any information yet on the cause of death of particularly the two children that, that we tragically saw lose their lives most recently last week, later in this know. month? Uh, no, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Siswe. Um, look, the, at this point in time, We've been working with the SEPs and all of that just to check uh, what is the cause. Um, there is still some analysis which is actually being done. They must, they must do you know, the toxicology analysis in terms of what really happened. But what we did on our side as the JMPD, we went and visited some of the shops. Uh, we visited the shops that was, um, that was alleged that there's, uh, there's, uh, these uh, cookies that were eaten. And also we went into the factory, into the manufacturing factories to check in terms of um, 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 you know, which batch, which, which was there that was actually, uh, um, um, we wish better that there that led into the, the whole death. And then one of the important things that we did, we wanted to go into the so-called business people, the owners of the spa shops, and we really had to ask them in terms of, do they have any <coughs> quality system, any quality management system that they can actually going to be put in, that they have put in place in terms of identifying if these spa shops Number one, who does the inspection? Number two, who checks the compliance? And what to God was the answer, no. None whatsoever. So for themselves, they don't even have an investigation unit. If anything happened, it actually breaks. Uh, I mean, there's probably some, some death that happens because of their spa's shop. There's no means that they can do any investigation and, and, and come up with a, with a solution. What about the, the city? Uh to what extent should the city take responsibility for proactively doing those inspections, <coughs> even ahead of these kinds of crises? And are there any agencies within the city that, that could have been part of that inspection? Look, the, um, we've been doing the inspection with, uh, there's an MMC for, for health and, and social development, Enima Makofela. She's been doing her uh, in inspection as well, just to check on the expired food. Uh, she's been on the ground uh, quite a lot, um, but I mean, you will not see at the, at the beginning. You might have seen, I was with her at the big, just after we were sworn in. We went into Enadale. We went with uh, environmental health. We went with the Chef Sapra as well, because there was an outbreak. Um, there was a concern with the, with the locals that there, there, there was a, a sale of uh, some illegal medicine. So they've been converted into some pharmaceutical things as well. So. We went in, also there was alleging that there's some uh, food that is off that has been sold. So we went in, we raided a couple of uh, many of those. But we went back into the drawing board because we knew to understand uh, in terms of how, how can we do a widespread uh, in, in investigation and, and in inspection. And uh, we find that a bit of challenges. Number one is that um, we need actually more in inspectors that, that, that they need on the ground. Currently, she said that she's got about 600 of them that have to look into I mean, I was talking to my colleague, said, and in Soweto alone, you're looking at about over a thousand spaza shops. I mean, I'm not, I'm just counting region D. Sure. Yeah, well, and then also on our side, remember when we close, we need to do monitoring and e evaluation. That's when now we come up with the idea that we must have a force multiplier in the form of the patrollers. So that now if we close, in terms of the, of the, of the EMS, because remember there are three uh, entities that needs to be, there are three divisions that which needs to be uh, present there. It's a building control, of which we have to go and apply in terms of the um, <coughs> zoning. Is the place zoned properly? Is the land considerable for consumption? Number two is the environmental health. And number three is your um, uh, so environmental health and the other one is your the environmental health when you have to get the, you know, the, the certificate and all of that. And the third one is the EMS. The EMS making sure that you've got the fire, uh, you know, extinguishers in the area, and then you've got emergency exit. So all these three uh, fears needs to, 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 to be there. Right. But yeah, so if, if they're not around, I can do, I can close, any of them can close if there's no, you know, the compliance on, on those three. And, yeah. and we'll come back on, on some of that as well. But right. Ms. Campbell, could I also ask you, what is the scale of this problem? Of course, the headlines ha have seen the, the tragic death of, of these children, but from your view from above, as it were, with the department. You know, what is the scale of the problem of, of food safety? Are you seeing a spike at this moment? And how can we understand the, the, the importance of this issue from your perspective? Good evening, Siswe, and good evening to the viewers and to the panel members. 
Um, from our vantage point, um, food safety is very is taken very seriously, and we are concerned with the deaths that have taken place. Um, as you would have seen in the inset, there have been cases previously, like the noodles incident, um, but those were never linked to be from the same product. And that is often what we try to do, is try to investigate if the outbreaks or the deaths that have been caused have been linked to a specific item or food item that has been manufactured in a certain area. Do you have any information on that? And that's what we that had to do in this case. with the listeriosis as well. Sorry, I was just saying, do you have any information at this early stage on, on this case and whether there's a single item? I know that biscuits have been linked to at least two of these cases. Um, I wonder if you've, you've managed to make any inroads in terms of the particular items yet. Okay, so the investigation is being done by the South African Police Service because they step in when there's an unnatural death. And from the health department, any preventable death is a death too many for us because we are in the, in the business of saving lives and ensuring a healthy life for everyone. Um, so in terms of the investigation, we are also awaiting the results from the South African Police Service because there does not seem to be correlation at the moment. The, Nade, the Naledi incidence was biscuits. The incidence on the West Rand was um, snacks. And then the outbreaks of food poisoning incidents in Kharankua and Winterfeld were different food items again. And one was from uh, food vendors and the other was from spaza shops. So we're still not sure as to whether there's an identified food vehicle that is common, uh, being manufactured <clears throat> by a certain individual, and that we can then link it to all of these cases. So we still have to wait the investigation to see what has been, uh, if we can trace back to see whether there's an, a common food item. Absolutely. Um Mr. Habib, thank you and welcome to, to the show. You know, beyond what the state can do to intervene, what can be done from the ownership perspective uh, of these shops in taking responsibility for food safety, especially when it comes to children in South African communities? Thank you for this uh, opportunity to come and express thank the you view of uh, the owners of the Ispaza shop as uh, uh, most of our community members are uh, engaged in the Espaza shops, in the townships. So in any case, I'm very sorry for the lives who was, by the reason of food or whatsoever, was passed. I feel very sorry because you don't substitute the life of a person. After saying this, yes, after the allegation of uh, after the allegation of this biscuit, so we, as a community, as a shop owners, we are start communicating the shop owners, its other owners in the townships, what regards to compliances that is. Unnegotiable, unnegotiable. There must be <clears throat> a law and order. When it comes to the foot, it's directly linked to the life of a person. So this is a complex matter. We have to work together. We are informing our community to cooperate with, with stake, different stakeholders. If there is even a mistake, to clean up. What comes to this uh, allegation of biscuits is still an allegation. Because of that, we got a lot of problems around Houghton. I personally visited the areas of problematic areas of Springs yesterday from morning till afternoon. What did you, what did you see when you visited those areas? Did you see any areas of concern that you believe can be proactively looked at even without the government intervening? Yes. Yes, we saw that area. We start look at the ground. 
what was this thing, how it will happen. So we start working with our community. There is definitely something must be corrected. The compliance must be, it's not negotiable. There must be a compliance. So we, they have to work with the health, with the health of, uh, with the health uh, uh, department, with, that is why it was needed. Even they don't have, there should be an awareness. We want to just giving an awareness of the matter, how to work normally, not affecting somebody's life. Mr. Mputi, what's your view? You obviously represent and see many businesses within the Soweto area, which has been a flashpoint of late. Uh, what's your view of what can be done to avert this kind of crisis and improve the overall safety of these very important areas of convenience for communities in, 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 our, in our country? Uh, Dr. Sizwe, thank you for inviting us. I think one of the biggest mistakes we, we make as South Africans is to not arrest people like this. As far back as 2015, the then small business minister, Lindy Wei Zulu, said, township businesses, stop fighting with foreign nationals. Find a way in which you can coexist. We have done exactly that. And I'm asking you, since what was seemingly a peaceful relationship, what evidence have we seen from foreign nationals, both legal as well as illegal? What evidence have we seen that they are a peaceful people? These are people that come into our townships. We call them my friend, meaning we receive them with warm hands and what we have to show for it. I'm talking across the country, all the provinces, you are seeing all sorts of abuse of our uh, hospitality. And I'm asking myself, why should we not arrest the, the ringleaders? These so, are the people that are sending uh, uh, poor people to go and work in un, uh, uh, unhealthy environments where they sleep in these things. So we must not focus on the foot soldiers. We must focus on uh, uh, leaders like, uh, 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 like him. The question is, how many people have died since the looting in 2015? How many innocent, peace-loving South Africans have died? And how many must die before we see the seriousness of this situation? Don't you think that's a generalization to suggest that all foreign nationals are somehow connected to, to this problem. Uh, we, we know that there are many South African-owned spaza shops. We know there are many corporate South African businesses that have been responsible for the deaths of people. So what about that? Isn't it just further inflaming to, to, to generalize me, all foreign-owned all foreign shops? Show me any raid by either JMPD, by inspectors, by subs that has not uncovered any dangerous foods within uh, the shops of foreign nations. Show me one raid when there was no evidence of any expired foods. Is there, so data? My, Is there data on that? Do we it's have not a about data. on that? You see, uh, uh, Dr. Sizwe, unfortunately... It's about data, of course it's no, about no, data. No, it's data, not about data, data it's about is, evidence. It, it's about evidence. Well, data is a form of evidence that you would need to prove that argument. How, uh, many, how many foreign shops, how many raids have happened? Give us the data to back it without just saying, have there been any? Who is going to compile that data? Well, presumably you know if you say how many have no, been. No, but who's, who, who's, who's going to compile the data? Well, you raised the point, so what is, yes, what is but, the evidence? But I'm, I'm, I'm saying we must not lose sight of the danger that is being unearthed on a daily basis. On a daily basis. So the issue of having to put together uh, data, I don't think it, it, it carries much weight, uh, okay. with all due respect. We you know, have, we've got all the evidence. How many people have been arrested? How many people have been charged? 
for all these debts. Okay, well, we'll come back on this debate and we're going to inquire into this wider question of the extent to which foreign-owned shops mm. are the problem uh, or are a disproportionate problem or if this is a wider question. And we will also bring in Mr. Habib to respond to some of the, the claims that have been made. We're discussing the informal economy in South Africa, particularly spaza shops in the wake of allegations of the death of children after eating illicit food from these outlets. And we're exploring the many ramifications of what that means, not only for society, but also the South African economy and food safety. Stick with us. Welcome back to Unfiltered. The question tonight that we're asking is whether the government is taking food safety seriously enough after allegations that children died in, linked, uh, in a way that was linked to the sale of illicit and eventually fatally consumed food. Uh, Dr. Tswaku, yeah. this question of foreign-owned shops yeah. versus the wider landscape of yeah. spaza shops in South mm, Africa mm. Is, is obviously uh, a hot-button issue. Yeah. Uh, what is, is your assessment yeah. of where the problem lies? Have yeah. you seen a particular problem sure. in uh, shops that have foreign ownership or mm. is there a, a more equally balanced problem? Mm. What's your assessment? Look, uh, Dr. Caesar, look, I just want to put this into context. Because you see, um, when you start, I call it the, uh, uh, the escape goatism. When you start saying that um, crime is done by this one and this one and this one, crime is crime. Whether you come from any nationality, doesn't matter. And also, if you don't comply with the bylaws, it's a problem. So I went into, in, into that technique, into that mind. So in my, in the assessment of the JNPD, uh, Dr. Siswe, in the shops that we have inspected right now, I want to ask uh, Mr. Johan Abib, why do you have cats in all the shops? That's number one. Number two, why are there people staying in the shops? And in these shops, Mr. Johannes knows that the people are selling expired food. And hence, I met up with their leadership to ask for inspection, are there inspectors or compliance officers? That is a trend that we've actually seen, and I was actually quite heartbroken because, because if you are a chairperson or you have that entity, you should be having a, 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 a sort of a compliance committee of some sort. And I met up with them to say, but are you aware that the shops that we have, we have done probably about 30 or 40 roughly, it's the same trend and it's just continuing. And also selling of the grandpa, which is fake. Also the counterfeit, uh, uh, you know, goods and all of that. And also some medicine. That's not something that's scheduled, just do you scheduled think, one. Do you think that's a problem of particularly mm. foreign-owned uh, spaza shops in South Africa? Look, the, 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 we have seen now, um, the, 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 the fighters now, they went to do an inspection in, um, there's a shop right, I think it's a shop right in Mopan. They found expired food. So it looks as if, so I didn't want to really put it in terms of these foreigners and all of that, but I'm saying that it looks as if there is now a sort of a carelessness in, in the shops in terms of not removing the food, which is ex expired. But now, in the, in the inspection that we've done so far, we've done this inspection, we're actually going to go wider now in terms of visiting some of the shop rights, which are, you know, uh, in, in Soweto, and, and look and see the, this trend. But what we've been doing now, we've been actually focusing on that because there's been an outcry before the, 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 these deaths that we've seen. We just uh, wanted to just go and check in terms. People have been, told, have been talking to us saying that the food has actually expired. But Mr. Abram, I, I wanted to check. One of the things that when I've interviewed them and asked them questions, they said that they did not know they need to stick with those bylaws. That actually took me aback because when you're coming into an area and you're coming to South Africa, you should be abiding by the bylaws. Well, well let's, yeah. let's, let's see, because uh, Mr. Habib has been clear that abiding by the laws is, is important for mm. his association. Yeah. What, how do you respond to the claims within uh, some communities that 
foreign-owned shops are particularly a problem? Do you believe that's the case? Or, or do you believe that this is a wider spread issue? Uh, Dr. Sepiwe, I think this one, I don't believe on this. These are just an allegation. It's not only this is the problem of Ispaza, foreign-owned Ispaza shops. I was sitting by TV, I watched, as doctor mentioned, I saw shop right, a lot of expired goods, a lot of. Ispar, the same. I'm not saying this is right. These things must be corrected. This thing has, there is no nationality. Bylaws are bylaws. Everybody must abide. As foreigners and nationals must abide by the law. And we remain friends. What my brother is talking, we remain friends. We have been friends and remaining friends. Must, something must be corrected if there is some misunderstanding. In this thing, we have to give the awareness. For me, it's a new thing. I'm not uh, running a special shop. When I see in the news, this is a new thing for me. So we have to give for our community, for our Spaza shop owners, uh, awareness. Something, if it has been corrected, must be corrected. And we have to look in a <coughs> complex, complex way. Not singly taking this expired and this one. We have to take a, in a complex situation how to correct this thing. This is a national phenomenon. So we have to correct it. We have to work together with different stake, stakeholders and we are ready to work together. If there is some mistake, to be corrected. Have to be corrected. Thank you. Be before you ask your question, Dr. Susan. Feel free to respond. How do we allow foreign nationals to compare themselves to ShopRite? How do we put illegal foreign nationals at the same level as ShopRite? No, we don't know that they're all illegal. No, no, I'm just saying. Illegal. Uh, no, no, I'm just saying. Uh, based on what has been said uh, a little while ago, ShopRite creates jobs in South Africa. ShopRite sells local products. How many local products do they sell? Do you see ShopRite people sleeping in, 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 in fact, he has not answered the questions that, that have been asked. Why do they sleep in the places where we buy our foods? Simply because we are poor. He has not answered those. So my point is, we, 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 we tend to give foreign nationals too much rights. And at some stage, we need to say enough is enough. How does this gentleman say he watches on TV and he compares himself to ShopRite? He's a nobody here. He cannot compare himself to a ShopRite. These what? are South Africans. He's not South African. Well, well we know that. But, but I mean, I think the, the comparison is that established South African retailers have also been accused of selling expired goods. And those expired goods can affect the health of South Africans. Mm -hmm. So if we only turn our attention to the much smaller, by the way, uh, shops, whether foreign owned or not, then we divert our attention away from corporate power, mm -hmm. which has also been responsible for, for the death of, well, of with, South Africans. With, with all due respect, uh, uh, Dr. Sizwe, since the proliferation of foreign nationals in our townships, people that we warmly welcomed, suddenly drug abuse, suddenly out of the blue, children are into prostitution, suddenly there is all sorts of illegal things happening since we allow them into our neighborhoods. But is that and really true? I mean, we know that drug abuse has been with with us for a very long time, predating apartheid and, and... You see, it is very easy 
for us to theorize about these things. I'm going to ask that you make an effort to join the MMC when he goes there and be able to see the brutal conditions that our people are being subjected to. So we, we don't want to theorize and, 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 and make this, you know, and sugarcoat this. This is a very serious situation. People are dying. People have died. Yet we say foreign nationals must still operate in our townships. And I am saying, as the chief servant at so to business access, we don't want them anymore. They must go. Okay, well, you certainly one, I don't think that goes yeah. very quickly. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. Let me bring in the other panel. Uh, we have four yeah, people on the I panel tonight. Yeah. Don't worry. Okay. We still have a lot of show yeah. to do. So there's more than, more than enough. Right. And, and I'm glad we're having a, a healthy debate this evening. Yeah. But um, Ms. Campbell, could, could I also ask you, I think one of, the, one of the challenges that seems to be creating a lot of ill feeling is, is that when we have seen these problems in the past, for example, you referenced the noodles incident, which, which also related to the consumption of, of food, which then created these health problems. It's not clear that there's, there's an urgent and widespread action from government. And then it feels like citizens are, are then left basically on their own here. Uh, has, has the department actually done enough to, does it have enough uh, inspection capacity? Has it acted vigorously enough to intervene in this sector in, in your view? Dr. Siswe, I think um, in terms of the noodles incident I spoke of, there was no causality between the actual noodles and the deaths of the children. The deaths were linked to other factors in the preparation and in the packaging of those noodles in both incidents. Um, so what we often say is that food safety is everybody's business. I'm a consumer before I'm a regulator. So I have a role to play as a consumer to ensure that what I purchase and what I make as a decision around my purchasing pattern, I'm informed about that premises being com complying to the law. So we've heard a lot about the law and um, people not being um, complying to it. And the critical thing when we say uh, about food safety is that every premises must have a certificate of acceptability. Yeah. And how do we determine that? Especially. We can determine that by whether or not the facility has it displayed. And if it's not displayed, then the consumer can also ask for it. Then we have the me as a regulator now ensuring that the law continues to deal with the issues that may arise. So we updated our hygiene regulations in 2018 to ensure that, because all along since 1999, when the initial regulations were in place, the owner of the premises had to ensure certain things relating to food safety, like making sure that there was a cleaning program in place, making sure that the food handlers were uh, reporting illness that could be transmitted via foods when they're preparing it, um, making sure that um, they wear protective clothing and ensuring that all the standards are met, ensuring that they have full traceability, where do they purchase the items but from, could, could I ask, keeping records, Could I training. ask Ms. Campbell, because, um, because the, the setting of regulations and the making of laws is one thing. But what about the enforcement via mm. the inspectors mm. and the norms and standards which you have created, which, which identify inspectors that do have to go into various kinds of premises, uh, premises where food is handled being one. Do you believe that those inspectors are, firstly, know exactly which governmental department you know, is, is actually responsible for, for that happening and, and is enough inspection taking place to enforce the regulations that you have changed and are updating? Okay, 
Okay, so I was coming to that. I was firstly outlining what the regulations require and why we had to put in place that the person in charge is also trained to ensure that those aspects are covered. Then we come to the enforcement of the regulations and the regulations are enforced through authorized municipalities, which are at district level or at metropolitan level. So as the MMC has indicated, the environmental health practitioners in the city of Johannesburg are responsible for enforcing this regulations. And I've heard from him that they've indicated that they do not have enough environmental health practitioners. Now, they are the only specialist profession that can go in to inspect these premises based on those regulations because they train for three years to learn about food safety as well as occupational health and safety as well as another other areas that they deal with as environmental health practitioners. Um, so with the enforcement, we require the city or the uh, district municipalities to have in place the necessary inspectors to go then and enforce the legislation. So they are the only ones that can go in and inspect and close premises together with the South African Police Service. Right. Because in terms of the Act, those authorised enforcement officers are the only ones that can enforce the legislation. Right. Let's leave it there for now and cut to a break. We're discussing the recent spate of deaths of children that are alleged to be linked to the consumption of food from spaza shops in our country. And we're asking, how did this happen? How can we resolve this problem to ensure that tragic deaths don't occur again? Stick with us and we'll continue the discussion after the break. Welcome back to Unfiltered. We're inquiring into food safety, particularly in spaza shops in South Africa this evening. Dr. Twaku, could, could I ask you, yeah. there's some confusion, it seems to me, yeah. uh, maybe in the media as yeah. well as in government, yeah. about exactly who is responsible here. And I wonder if there's a deeper problem mm. in that the legislative environment itself may not be clear because you hear provincial leadership mm. talking about this, uh, you hear national mm. leadership talking about yeah. this, but, but local leaders say we need better regulation at national level, national mm. leaders say we need quicker implementation at local level. Mm. Do we have a deeper and more widespread problem here of a lack of clarity with cooperative governance? And who exactly carries the can for this at the end of the day? Look, when I, when I read in terms of, first we'd say, how does this puzzle shop comes about? Where is the application form? The application form, it lies with the um, uh, developmental department. Sure. You have to go and apply there. Locally. Locally. Sure. So you take that and then from there you say, um, I want to have a spaza shop at my place. Say, so, so the so those, uh, uh, that, that department, it's actually town planning. So they must check that if it's, is it zoned first now for that. And then secondly, if I'd say I'm going to have by myself, let's say I'm coming to have a shop there, there must be at least an agreement. Secondly, I need to advertise on the newspaper that I'm going to have a spaza shop. And then again, you need to write to the people, local people, write them one by one if there's any objection. And then building Google control is going to get all of those and say, no, it's fine. We agree. It's okay. You can have that. Now, environmental health comes in. So because as my colleague says there, they said, you must have what is called a COA, a certificate of acceptance, because the place must be clean. It must be fine. Thirdly, you come now with the EMS. You take your plan. That plan must have an emergency exit. And it must have uh, your fires and all of that. And it must be stamped and approved not sleeping there. Now, I met, uh, so, and then you take all this information, and then it goes into the Department of uh, uh, the Developmental Planning. Then they say, fine, you can have it. Then all departments must do their inspection. 
you're building control to check if you if you, you complied you did not uh, after we said you must do this and then you started building another structure this side or started to partition it then you can sleep that's what we've seen so in many of these parts of shop dr Sizwe, that i have seen ne? and and now taking a sample everywhere i had to say no i'm going to stop and johan i met up with your people and they agreed that they're not complying you must have a file that says that you've done A, B, C, and D. Not that, I'm not going to go into the narrative of where you're coming from, but in his compliance. And they said to me, they don't comply. And I said to the guys, why are you sleeping there and you've got cats? And why also you're not removing these materials which are expired? And said, no, you don't have a quality system. And I said that I'm giving them a 14 day. They must comply. The 14 days so that they can come to the party and if they need to be assisted, they must go to the municipality and get all those files. So 14 yeah. days or what? Because the thing is... Or what? I'm going to it, close it, them. That's a problem. Well, it, it, yeah. it can. Can yeah. government cover the ground? I think that's the other yeah. the problem. Look, because you yeah. said a thousand. Yes. So a Look thousand what? spaza shops in, in just in Soweto. Yeah. There are 150,000 sure. spaza shops in South Africa. So like, yeah, <laughs> with gonna, all of our crime uh, yeah. problems in South Africa, can yes. we really look at every one of those? Do we have the capacity? Maybe yeah, okay. the problem. This is what... This just is just a to proposal. put you... Yeah. The problem may be that yeah. government doesn't, doesn't have the capacity yeah. to, so. to check. And that's why within that gap... Mm we see informality growing sure. because, in fact, shop owners, whatever their, their sure. stripe or origin, mm. have actually figured out that they're not going to be checked. The, the way that we've thought about this is that, look, you've got city of Johannesburg, you've got wants and VDs, right? And then what you could do is that we, at the Department of Public Safety, we are going to unleash now 600 patrollers based in, 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 like what based? I know they, they call them, uh, <laughs> it's not Rama <laughs> you know? <laughs> It's not, sure. it's called them the JMPD Red Patrollers. The patrollers, what they do is that, uh, when I spoke to my colleague, any uh, MMC for, 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 for health, I said what she could do for us, because we have a crisis in terms of the manpower of the inspectors. And it's a fact that I think with my colleague there, I want to raise that with, we must invest on environmentally healthy people. Then they're unhappy because they've been forgotten for a very long time. They're crying about over time. They're not being promoted. It's like they don't exist. So we need to really, really invest on them. But the solution or the idea that we, we had in the, in the Department of Public is that we are going to capacitate these patrollers because they're going to be trained as peace officers, right? Then they can have a guideline at least to say, how do you... Uh, you know, do the in inspection in terms of the expired food and what, what you must look for. Right. What they can do is, is to quarantine, is to quarantine the food and also say this other shop is not complying all of that. Right. Then we can come in, we sure. can say, yes, we agree. The inspector can come and sign off. And then L the, me, the problem, Sizwe, very quickly, mm -hmm. the okay, problem is the monitoring now and evaluation yeah. at the end. Sure. How do we monitor after that? Okay. That, yeah, Let then you say you can still use them now because they can alert us now that, We've closed the shop and they've opened and, sure. and then the, the, we can use the, you know, the, 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 the JMPD because we're going to put, you know, the new, the, the traffic white wardens as well, the, the new ones. Right. So those ones are going to act as the eyes and ears now because when you close, the ones that you closed yesterday, they open up tomorrow because there's no monitoring and evaluation. So these sure. patrollers working with, we can work with the province. We can work with the national as a multiplier, as a force multiplier. Okay, yeah. I, just want, yeah. I just want to bring in Ms. Campbell there because you made the important point of, of the distinction between legislating and then the EHPs or environmental health practitioners who ultimately at the local level have to implement. But what happens when the EHPs themselves are complaining, they, they aren't being given sufficient you know, uh, tools of trade. Yes. Well, what happens then funny. when the legislation fails on the ground? Is that the problem of the local municipality or is that uh, a naivety in the legislative framework? Okay, see, so another facet of what National does with my colleagues in the environmental health that coordinate uh, the environmental health services for the country, mm. they do audits of the provinces and the municipalities and one of the requirements that they audit is asking about whether they have sufficient capacity and whether the 
municipality follows the norms and standards that have been established sure. around how they monitor and evaluate. So, for example, in the food premises, the requirement in the norms and standards is that they must be visited once per quarter. And every um, year they are then audited for the verification that that does happen. So they do a self-assessment tool and then somebody comes in from national to assess as well. So based on their uh, responses, that's how it's then determined with our environmental health unit, whether or not there is sufficient capacity out there. And to date, I haven't been informed that there is insufficient capacity. Um, most of the municipalities indicate that they are visiting the premises on the quarterly basis. Um, so I'm not too sure in terms of the capacity now being indicated is a challenge. Right, right, absolutely. We're, we're going to go to our final ad break. And when we come back, we're going to ask the important question of where to from here? How do we ensure that South African communities are safe, that they are thriving, that traders within them are also thriving and that ultimately there are no children who are at risk of either death or illness. We'll touch on that when we come back from the break. Stick with us. <coughs> Is government taking food safety seriously and what are the issues that arise around spaza shops, their critical role in the informal South African economy, but also the imperative of safety and indeed the safety of children in our country? Mr. Mputi, we're rounding off here. Where to from here? What do you think we can do to ensure that this doesn't happen again? What are the solutions that we can arrive at to avert these kinds of problems in the future? Well, I can assure you that simply because we are not saying anything does not mean we are not doing anything. Townships have been empowered through the Township Economic Development Act, which was promulgated last, uh, last year. So we now have the provincial government that says we and township business, we are one. So we are now forming ourselves. We've got our partners in the form of African Cooperative Desk who are helping communities to form cooperatives so that there is no business that should come into our neighborhoods without informing us. If the big retailers tell us before they come, I think the same should happen with every other. So the question is, what can we do from here? And I want to assure people that we are working, we've got a campaign called Asina Valo. Uh, through that campaign, we are now identifying products that can be manufactured in line with all the compliance, uh, HACCP, et cetera, et cetera. Because the people that we have brought into our neighborhoods, they've brought us nothing but uh, misery. So what we are saying is we are busy working with all spheres of government to make sure that we've got cooperatives that are going to buy local products. We've got a movement called Proud Liekasi, which identifies products that are fresh, that are being given to our people. So all I'm saying is people must not be worried that we are not saying anything. We've dealt with our colleagues as far back as 2015. We're dealing with Amir way back. We've shown them nothing but a, a, a friendship. You know, but what we've got is nothing but brazen, you know, uh, 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 disregard for our laws. Right. You know, so we are saying enough is enough. They must go. If they believe they want to do business, let them go do business amongst ourselves. Uh, themselves. We will do business uh, amongst ourselves. There's been no looting. There has been no looting just to demonstrate that our people are not a violent people. Okay. But enough is enough. Enough is enough, they must go. Sure. Uh, Mr. Habib, what are your views on the way forward and how to solve this problem? I think this I mentioned earlier, this is a complex matter. It has to be solved in a complex manner. The other thing, nowhere to go. We are here. We are moving to Agenda 2063. 
we are Africans. We are moving to that. If somebody lies or not, the other thing is, if somebody is wrong side of the law, it doesn't matter is a national South African or foreigner. We must abide by law. And we have to respect by law the laws of the country. We have to respect the compliance. If we have to correct it, we will give awareness and we will correct. And we are continuing to work. We don't go nowhere. This is our home. We yeah. are moving to Agenda 2063. But not in our townships. Yeah. It's but not, not in our townships. In Dr. Africa, Dr. all over. Let's we are it. moving to that. in our areas, let's but give, not in our townships. Let's give Dr. Fagu <laughs> an opportunity to uh, no. conclude his thoughts. And I, I, I'm afraid we, we are running. Okay, I'll be very quick. I think that, one, we must invest on our environmental inspectors. Let's capacitate them. Let's just take care of them. Over time, incentivize. Number two, also the uh, building uh, inspection guides. EMS guys, so our inspection must actually be, uh, we must uh, try to increase it. That's what we're doing at the JMPD, by the way. That's why we're putting all the, the patrollers, we are hiring the traffic guardians, and also we are trying to look at the shift that, um, that I mean, uh, in the shift that arrangement that they're having right now, we're putting incentives so that the guys can go out with the inspectors. And I want to, at the last part in short, Yamir, uh, my brother, that the shops, are not complying, okay? They're not complying, but I did not hear you saying what's the time frame, because the time frame is very important. Okay. Because what's going to happen is that, it's not gonna be that we're targeting certain you know, people. We're, we're targeting the, 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 the Spaza shop, and they're going to be closed, and it's not gonna be very nice. Uh, we, we, we met with them, and they know that there's not compliant. So I wanted to maybe to hear from him, when is it going to comply so that uh, you know you don't have the, the, these right. problems? And, and yeah, we will yes. continue this conversation yeah. on social media, uh, etc. But yeah. uh, Ms. Campbell, could I, could I conclude with you? Unfortunately, we are running out of time, but just your, your final thoughts on how we can uh, improve the situation and uh, go forward. Thank you, Dr. Siswe. I think to, I want to go back to saying what I said earlier with the uh, indication that food safety is everybody's business mm. and everybody on the ground would be uh, assisting us greatly by reporting to the municipalities when they have concerns. I must also appreciate the media because ever since the story has broken, my telephone has not stopped ringing or getting a WhatsApp to ask, is this the number for food safety? Can I please report X and X? So you have and us then to we blame. are able to put them in touch uh, with the relevant municipalities to then report it to Excellent. the environmental health right. practitioners. Thank you so Thank much, you. Ms. Campbell, for joining us. Thank you all to our panel Thank for uh, Thank you. Uh, stimulating and... Uh, quite uh, eventful discussion. Um, thank you for joining us on Unfiltered this evening. Food safety and the safety of children in South Africa, are, of course, of paramount importance. So is the informal economy and making sure that there is fairness and access for all. Tonight, we've inquired into those questions, the legislative landscape, and indeed where we go from here. Let's continue the conversation on social media at Unfiltered SABC and join us again for more Unfiltered news, views, and unfiltered conversations. Good evening.